Welcome to Reality is Undefeated. I'm at Gatewood. Thank you for tuning in. Just over a month ago, I found myself sitting in a gymnasium watching my son's junior varsity basketball game and suffering through some of the worst officiating I have ever seen. And while I'm sitting there, I'm looking around at the state championship banners for everything from men's basketball to women's tennis. I'm looking at the family, student, faculty, and alumni support in the stands. I'm listening to the band play during halftime and beat their drums after every score. I'm just taking in this environment created for young people to succeed at this private academy. And while I'm doing so, I suddenly realize that this is the very academy that I had a chance to attend 25 years ago, but of all things, declined to write an essay for admissions. And my wife is sitting there next to me, so I'm telling her this, and she began to talk about how different my life would have been had I gone to that school, how I wouldn't have gone to four different high schools, night school, and adult school, how I would have made all these different friends of different ethnicities that would have given me a proper perspective of people from different cultures at an earlier age in life. Both true statements. Because when I got my first job working with people from different cultures, it opened my eyes to how many of us, talking people in general, go through many of the same struggles. But when I look back at the reason I declined to write an essay for admissions to the metal school here in Vegas, it can all be boiled down to fear. I was afraid to be the new guy on campus. I've been going to school with the same crew since third grade. I was afraid to be that only poor black kid from Northtown in a mix of what I assumed to be all white affluent students at this campus bordering Summerlin, the richest community in Las Vegas. Although my tuition would have been paid like everyone else's courtesy of my Uncle Vaughn, I was afraid that not having lunch money daily or taking public transit to and from school or even worse, getting picked up every now and then in my mom's Maroon 4 Aerostar would make me the subject of all kind of broke jokes. I was afraid to be placed in an environment where my very best would be expected because I was afraid that my very best would not be enough at a school where my peers were likely to be just as smart as I was. Because see, I was comfortable just being one of the smartest amongst my peer group in the neighborhood. It's funny because I feared that environment, but was comfortable walking streets that could offer a life-threatening challenge at any time. I was comfortable under the instruction of teachers that weren't going to challenge greater things from me. I was comfortable in a lot of situations and I feared being uncomfortable. Coincidentally, a year after I made the decision to ignore the admissions packet that my uncle had mailed to my address, one of my favorite movies will be released. In this film, Jamal, a high school age black male with a passion for basketball and writing, is given an opportunity to attend this prestigious New York Academy after scoring very high on his test. His first inclination is to decline. Because like myself, he dumbed down his intelligence to feel comfortable in his environment. He often plays ball with his friends from the neighborhood. And one night on a dare from his friends, he enters the home of someone who frequently watches them play ball from a window up high. While in the home, he's startled by the sudden appearance of the resident popping up, which causes him to run out of the residence, leaving behind his book bag. When given his book bag back, he checks its contents, particularly making sure his coveted notepads are there. And when he begins to continue his writing, he sees that the resident has written remarks, seemingly grading his essays. This will begin an unlikely friendship between Jamal and the owner of the residence, who Jamal would later find out is a world-renowned writer in hiding, William Forrester. Once this information is disclosed, an agreement will be reached for William to help Jamal with his writing in exchange for Jamal keeping William's true identity and whereabouts a secret. Well, one night when Jamal has writer's block, William hands him a previous work of his own and tells him to start typing that until he can find his own words. So Jamal writes the same first paragraph, then writes his own story from there. And there's a lot more film left, but this is the point I wanted to reach. Because when you think about it, none of us are really responsible for the first paragraph and for that fact, the first chapters of our lives. We all borrow from someone else. For the vast majority of us, our parents are giving us a chapter from their book. But it's imperative for us to find our own words and begin to write our own stories as soon as we can. Especially if we don't like the plot, if we don't like our character's role, if we don't like the ending that's ahead for us. We have to write that next chapter, change that narrative, change how our character will be received by the reader. I know that last chapter said she hit rock bottom. I know. I read that. But that next chapter can read how she decided she wasn't going to lay there. 
The chapter after that can say how she ascended into running her own company. In the last chapter I read, you want to know what that said? It says she formed a nonprofit assisting families in need. I know that third chapter said he ran in a gang. I know. But that fourth chapter, that chapter can tell us how he got out the streets. And that fifth chapter can capture the audience with a tantalizing tale of how he became a man of God. And now he runs an after school program for at risk youth. And it's not just these narratives of struggle that need to be rewritten. Some of you are at jobs that pay well, have good benefits, but you're dying inside because you want to give the world something else. Some of you are under pressure by your families to marry that handsome young man or that beautiful young lady, but that's not who you want to wake up next to every morning. Some of you feel like you have to follow your lineage and attend the family alma mater, but you want to go to Prairie View, not Texas Southern. Some of you are given the same name as your father and you're expected to be the next version of him. And that's hindering you from being the first version of you. And understand that you could write a different story at any moment. Just because you continue down the path that the first few chapters had you going down doesn't mean your fate is sealed. You could be in chapter 12, miserable in life, and write the story of finding peace in chapter 13. You could be in chapter 14, living a life full of sin, and find your way down the righteous path in chapter 15. You could be in chapter 18, lonely, and write a story of finding companionship in chapter 19. You can be a recluse in chapter 22 but write the story of world travel in chapter 23. But what's constant in every chapter is you. You have to write that story because whether you write it or not, a chapter is being written. See, I didn't attend the middle school because I allowed fear to write that chapter of my life. But once I grabbed that pen for myself, I began writing all types of possibilities. I wrote chapters on traveling. I wrote chapters on leaving the streets for good. I wrote chapters on relocation. I wrote chapters on additional loves. I wrote chapters on uh, recommitment. I wrote chapters on refocus. I wrote chapters on career changes. I wrote chapters on leaving things that aren't working for me. I wrote chapters on being unapologetically black. I wrote chapters on being unapologetically me. I wrote chapters on doing things on my own time. I wrote chapters on choosing a different way to communicate with the world. You're welcome. In 2025, Lord willing, I'll be writing a different chapter of my life. If you would have met me just four years ago, you would have met a different person. Wherever you end up tomorrow will be determined by the direction you go today. And understand the story doesn't end until it's done. Have you ever read Dick Gregory's autobiography? What about Frederick Douglass's? For those who know, that isn't necessarily a yes or no question. The correct response is, which one? There's more than one autobiography for many people because they continued to write new chapters even after they seemingly told us their last. Y'all think Malcolm would have only had one if he wasn't taken away from us? That man was about to change the world. See, I purposely didn't tell you guys the ending of the film that I described earlier because I know the majority of people have not seen Finding Forrester. But I also know by telling it to that point, many have been intrigued. And I've already looked it up and I've already pondered a number of outcomes of how that story ended in their minds. If there were 50 different people that had not seen that movie, but had to continue that story from where I left it off, you would get 50 different endings. The same could be said for life. Your first few chapters are very similar to a lot of other people's. You're not the only one from the hood. You're not the only one that had abusive parents. You're not the only one that had great expectations. You're not the only one who can't escape their last name. You're not the only one that was affected by that storm. You're not the only one who... You finish that line. Then figure out how you're going to finish your story. You know, when I was sitting in that gym, I was surprised to see that many black faces rooting for the home team. Now, I know it could have been different 25 years ago, but I have to say, I could not have been any more wrong about the environment that was cultivated at the Meadow School. But I missed out on writing that chapter. I'm glad I don't fear anything anymore.